Hi, it's time for another math. Easy solution. We're going to discuss well, a further into uh, inverse trigonomet trigonometry and basically look at the derivative of basically arc secant or inverse secant of x. You could write it as this way here using implicit differentiation here. So basically, if you write down the function y equals its inverse secant of x squared. Remember my from my earlier videos on inverse functions. This just means well, you switch the x and y's. So it's basically solving for yeah, solving for the uh, x inside the, the secant now. So instead of just solving secant of the value, now we're going to find the inside. So that's all the inverse is. We just switch the x's and y's, and that's what this negative one is, uh, how it's written for trigonometry. So basically, you have this function here, and now uh, recall also that by the definition of secant, this one's just 1 over cos y. And now before I uh, prove the, the derivative of this, we just have to see how the graph of this actually looks like. And first thing I want to do is basically graph secant of x. So this one is just cos of x, the regular graph. You can see a video link below on uh, how this is done. So basically, for secant, it's going to be the one over cosine. So this, if this is the curve for a cosine, so at this point here where this value is 1, uh, it, 1 divided by 1 is going to be 1 as well. And then as here, wherever it's 0, you're going to have an asymptote because at at where this one is uh, at cos y or at cos x equals to zero, one over zero goes to infinity here. So then in this case here, we're gonna have an asymptote like this, and this is gonna reach infinity uh, there. And then for the negative side, it's gonna be the same thing here. This one's approaching zero, and then this one's gonna go up like that. So this is gonna go something like this. So with asymptote add negative pi over two. And then, and then when you get to this point here where this is a negative one, and then the inverse of, yeah, this is, so this value here is negative 1 here. So 1 divided by negative 1 just going to be negative 1 here. And then when you go to pi over 2, it's going to go to infinity as well. But you're going to go from the negative here because this value, of course, is negative. So it's approaching 0 from the negative side. So you're going to go something like this. And similarly, across like this, you're going to get something like this here. And this, this is basically just secant of uh, x here. And if you were to graph it with Google, like I have here, cosine and secant x here, as you can see, the blue is the cosine, and then the secant looks like this. It's asymptotes at the pi over 2, which is exactly how I drew it. So now to get an idea of how the uh, inverse of this is graphed, remember from my earlier video uh, on inverse functions, it's basically a reflection of the y equals x line, so whenever you take an inverse, because you're switching the x and y values here. So for, for trigonomic functions you, or any inverse, you have to pick, you have to use a horizontal line test and basically pick a range that you're going to, you're not going to have it intersect two points here. So at this, so you can't pick this range because when you inverse this one, you're going to have, two, you're going to have two points that have the same, yeah, the same y value for each x value here. So, and what's usually picked for a secant is actually, well, two unique Oh, uh, well, a unique uh, range here. So this is going to be the new range here, actually. This is what you usually pick from 0 to pi here. Yeah, so usual range for the inverse secant. And the reason I'm using uh, range instead of domain is because the domain of a function is when you take the inverse, it's going to be the range. That's all you're doing here. So if we let's just uh, find the inverse right now. And remember, inverse, you just switch x and y. So if this point is at 0 and 1, we're going to have to pick at, uh, pi over 2 is going to be 1.57 ish, so this is going to be something here. This should be now 1, 0, so all we're doing is flipping this one here. So now uh, we look at this point here, at, at here it's going, uh, it's approaching, well at pi over 2 it is, goes to infinity, so now we look at infinity and pi over 2, so pi over 2 is around here. So now if we take the inverse, it's going to go across like this, and so it will go something like this here, where this is approaching basically infinity or pi over 2. So infinity is the x. So we just switch them. And then also from, so now if we look at this point here, this one is at pi negative 1. So now we have to go to, well, negative 1. Actually, I yeah, know negative 1 is uh, it's less than here. It's a bit off scale. But anyway, so this would be negative 1 because it's less than pi over 2. And then at so then we go to negative 1 and pi. So pi, if this is pi over 2, pi should be somewhere around, I don't know, we'll just pick a random point here. So it should be something like that. And then so we'll have a point around here. And then when we look at this point here, this is approaching, well, basically pi over 2 and then goes to negative infinity. So then this should be basically negative infinity is going here and then up to, well, pi over 2 here. So we're going to have it something like this. And this would actually look something like that here. And this is approaching, well, this is negative infinity and pi over 2. So all we're doing is switching it. Yeah, and this, this value is usually the, uh, 
this is usually how the secant of inverse of x looks like when you pick this range when you when you pick the this domain here and then just basically flip it about this axis yeah so then if we just write down the range and domain this will be important in the proof which i'll show soon basically the range for secant of uh, inverse secant of x basically is going to be between uh, y is greater than or equal to zero as as above here and it's going to be less than pi over two because there's an asymptote there and then it's going to have y is greater than pi over two and less than equal to pi here so that's the point there and then, the, and then the domain is going to be basically the absolute value has to be greater than or equal to one here for the x's because it's not defined between these two points here. As, it's, as you can see, there's nothing there. And basically, if you were to graph it with Google here, I graph secant, which is the blue, and then uh, arc secant or the inverse is going to be the red. So it looks exactly like how I graphed it there. So there's nothing between uh, negative one and one here. As you see, it goes to pi over two, and this goes to basically uh, infinity there or x. And then, yeah, an asymptote at pi over two. So now, uh, now we'll get to the proof of it. So basically, let's write down uh, what do we know here. Basically, y is equal to inverse secant of x, and then this is the same as writing x equals secant y. That's just what the inverse means. Remember, and then this equals to one over cos y. So now we're going to use this point here and use implicit differentiation. Basically, we'll just rearrange this to get the derivative of y here. So this is going to be x equals to one. So just multiply the cosine y out. So now using implicit differentiation and basically using the product rule, basically take derivative on both sides. Use the product rule and chain rule all together. In this case, the derivative of cosine y is going to be negative sine y. Then using the chain rule y prime, then it times it by x. Then using the product rule plus cosine y times the derivative of, of x. Is this going to be one equals two? Well, zero. The derivative of this is zero, and the the derivative is we're, we're just doing it in terms of x. So dy over dx. This equals to y prime. So now we have this solve for y prime. So we just take this inside the other side. So we have co negative cos y over x sine y, or negative. So there's a negative there. So then the negatives cancel. So we're just going to be left with, yeah, just, just, just cancel those out. We're just left with cosine y divided by x times sine y here. So now we need to get cosine and sine in terms of x here. And we can do that easily with this one here. If we rearrange this, we're going to get basically cosine of y is equal to 1 over x here. Just flip this, put this there, put the one under it, underneath. So we have this in terms of x. So now the uh, sine y, we could do that as well using the identity. Uh, this identity here based sine squared y plus cos squared y equals 1. You can see a proof for that in the video links below. So basically this one here, if we just solve for y, I mean sine y, we're going to get sine y is equal to, we'll take this on, on the other side, cos squared y, and then all, well, plus or minus uh, square root here. So now that's that equals this one here, but recall from the range, so this is why it's important to graph it, so the range is usually picked is going to be from 0 to uh, pi over 2, and uh, I'll set it to pi. So basically, uh, in this case here, y goes from 0 to pi here, and recall the graph of the sine function. You're going to have sine function looks something like this, where this is pi, and this is zero here. So this is for sine of, let's say, y, if, if we just flipped it over. And in this case here, this so from zero to pi, it's going to be greater than zero here. So then we're just, this has to be positive here. So we look at the positive only. Yeah, so we're going to get here sine y is equal just to plus square root one minus cos squared y. So then we could also rewrite this one, uh, just plugging in this cos y equals one over x. So this one's going to equal two. 1 minus 1 over x squared. And now if we put this all together inside this uh, big function, we're going to get y primes equal to 1 over x squared, because the cosine y is equal to 1 over x, times this by this, there's already a 1 over x there, so it's x squared, and then square root 1 minus 1 over x squared. So this is our derivative. But uh, we'll just simplify it further and get it in the form that's usually uh, used. So what, could, what we could do here, we could uh, simplify this further by letting this x squared, we could write this as basically s uh, absolute value of x times it by, this is square root x squared here. And the reason I'll show you, I'll explain further into this, basically this one here, this is just equal to x, because the square root of x is just going to be, no, of x squared is going to be x. And now this one here has to be absolute value, because when we take this one, if we write it like this, uh, because x squared has to be greater than zero here. So if, if you didn't have this square root, I mean, then this absolute value, you were going to have negative uh, function here. So you can't so it would be negative and positive. So this, this has to be absolute value there. So then, and this one, yeah, if you just x times this by x is going to be x squared and it has to be greater than zero. So then if we write, write it like this, we're going to get now y primes equal to, yeah, we're going to get something like this here. One divided by absolute value of x times it by square root 
of x squared and times this. And recall also, you should also recall this. I would also recall this for with, uh, you can see the video link on power functions. Basically, if you have a power like this, if they're both of the same power, you can just put them all into the same one. Because this square root is the same thing as 1 over 2. So then this x squared time uh, to the power of 1 over 2 times this to the power of 1 over 2, we just you could combine them together here. So once we combine them, we'll just write it in this form here, y prime is equal to, you know, equal to this one here. So I just, instead of putting 1 over 2, I just put the square root. So now we can simplify this, multiply inside, and this is just going to be 1 over, yeah, 1 over uh, absolute value of x times it by square root of x squared minus 1 here. So this is the simplest method. This is what's usually written in, uh, if you look at Google and whatnot, if you, or Wikipedia. So this is usually the form that it's written in. And also note that this 1 over x squared, so recall also for this one here, for real values, this one has to be greater than 0. And then if it's greater than 0, then you yeah, get greater than equal to 0. So then x squared is, uh, so this one has to be greater than 0 here. So 1 greater than 0. And then you're going to have it as x yeah, so it's going to have just something like this. So x is to be greater than or equal to well, square root of the plus or minus, or just plus or minus 1 here. And also, it can't equal to 0 here, so x can't equal to... Z I mean, x, can, uh, x can't equal to uh, 1 in this case, because if you have a 1, you're going to have a 1 divided by square root 0, just 1 over 0. So you're going to have it undefined here. So then the, the domain in this case is going to be absolute value of x has to be greater than 1 here. So it can't. So for this case, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. But then, since it's one divided by, you can't have it as uh, yeah. So the bottom denominator can't be zero here. So that's why you yeah. So yeah. So that's why I made it greater than or equal to one here. So basically, you have this one here. So this is our final answer here. And then if you were to graph it out, you're gonna get something like this here. So this the, the red is uh the blue is the just the inverse secant. That's the blue. That's how it looks like. And then the Derivative now it's you're gonna have it is is which is the red one divided by abs you can write that for absolute value times square root x squared minus one so you have something like this here so it looks like it so the derivative is gonna go to zero as it goes to negative infinity and also as positive infinity goes to zero there's nothing in between there's no values between one and uh, yeah, negative one and one and also it goes to infinity here at ones so that's why it's not defined there so you're gonna have a, a, a it approaches infinity there so it looks something like this so that's a that's a curve. Well, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned uh, about uh, inverse secant. And yeah, you can down remember, you can always download these notes in Dropbox and Dropbox below. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions. That's all for today. And uh, yeah, just stay tuned for another math easy solution.